So today this so today this tutorial is going to be on Blender, which is a very versatile program when it comes to 3D computer graphics software. You can do many different things with it, whether it's creating animated films, creating visual effects, designing 3D printed models, applications, or even 3D video games. So you can do many different things with this program, and it's available on Mac, Windows, and Linux. And it's open source, so you can download it for free. And we're going to be looking at some of the main features of this program when it comes to 3D printing. By default, when you open a new Blender project, a cube is automatically added to the center of your project. Okay, and you can see it here. And I just want to show you how you can manipulate this cube. So if you look, there's, there's three arrows here. Those represent the three axes. And you can see this red arrow. If you click and drag on the cone part of the arrow, you are able to move the cube along the x-axis, which is forwards and backwards. Okay, if you let go, it'll stay. See the green arrow? If you drag and move this back and forth, you're moving it along the y-axis, which is your left and right. And then finally, the blue arrow, this is your z-axis, and this is your up and down. Next thing I want to show you is how to change your perspective and how you look at this cube, which is very important when you're modeling in a 3D space. So first thing I want to show you is how to orbit around the cube. If you click and drag with your middle mouse button, you can actually orbit around this cube. It's kind of like rotating your eyes around this cube. Um, so that's one way of changing your perspective. Another way is if you hold shift first and then drag your middle mouse, you're going to actually pan. You're going to grab the uh, cube perspective and drag it back and forth. Okay. So this is also important. So between these two tools, you can move and change your view. It's not actually moving the cube in the space. It's just moving how you view the cube. And finally, if you use the mouse wheel and just scroll in and out, you can actually zoom in and out of the object. So um, between these three different controls, your middle mouse to orbit, your shift middle mouse to pan, and your scroll wheel to zoom in and out, you can change your perspective of the cube. And I would say one of the most important things to keep in mind is this little menu down here that says object mode. You want to make sure that you're selected on object mode, um, at least for the beginning part. And if you ever get in a tricky situation, just make sure you're on the, the right mode. Um, these different modes, you can do different things. Um, we're going to be dealing a little bit with the edit mode in this tutorial possibly the sculpt mode um, for you know designing our potential 3D printed object. One of the first things I want to show you when it comes to manipulating the cube is how to scale it. And it's easy enough, you just push S on your keyboard and drag your mouse and it will perform a un uniform scale of the cube. So it's gonna size up and size down in all directions and when you when you want it to um, stay you just click and um, you know the scale changed a little bit but if I wanted to scale along the axis um, in whatever axis that is you hit S and then you choose the axis so if I want to hit if I want to scale along the x-axis I hit X and you can see it's only gonna scale in the left and right axis the x-axis um, if I wanted to um, scale uh, forwards and backwards, I could hit Y, and you can see when I drag, it's going to go uh, forwards and backwards along the Y axis. And, um, and then, of course, Z, if I wanted to scale up and down, I could hit Z and, and just drag the mouse, and it'll scale along the Z axis. And so say I wanted to, you know, say I wanted to create a skyscraper. I'm going to um, drag it to the length that I want and click. And then it's going to stay that um, it's going to stay that um, size. And I also wanted to mention that another way to scale is to click on this little uh, transformation manipulator down here. It's this little icon with a line and a square. You can click on that, and you can see that it uh, changes from arrows to little um, cubes at the end of the lines. And you can actually click on the um, lines and drag them. 
and uh, you can scale that way as well. So with any great skyscraper, you're going to want an antenna at the top. So I'm going to show you how to add another object to the mix and how to get it to the right size that you want. Okay, so to add an object, we're going to go up to this menu up here and click Add, hover over Mesh, and for an antenna, I'm going to click on Cylinder. So I'm going to click on Cylinder, and you can see over here it inserts a cylinder. And I'm going to move this closer to the building, and maybe a little bit farther back. And this would be a very large antenna. So what I'm going to do to change the size is click S, or push S on the keyboard, and move the mouse. So it's a really thin looking antenna. And you can see it gets shorter too, so that's going to be an issue. Um, but we know how to fix that by clicking on the scale button down here and dragging on the blue. And I might have to drag on the blue again. And you can see I got a little antenna um, soon to be on top of our skyscraper. And to move the antenna on top of the skyscraper, we're going to click on the little cursor down here so that we can move it. I'm going to drag it up and drag it over and change my perspective and um, maybe tweak it a little bit. And look at that. We get a nice little um, skyscraper with an antenna. Kind of looks like an old style cell phone. So with our skyscraper, um, maybe we want to put uh, a large uh, piece of text on the building for whatever reason. Maybe it's a company building. Maybe it's our own building. So maybe I want this to be called Austin Building. So I'm going to show you how you can add text to an object. So you're going to, same way we added the cylinder before, the antenna, we're going to click on Add, but this time we're going to click on Text. And somewhere a piece of text was inserted over here. Um, by the way, um, it inserted over here because um, if you see this little target looking icon, wherever that is, is where the thing is going to be inserted. And you can change the um, position of it by just clicking with your primary mouse button. So the piece of text is over here. I'm going to drag it over and zoom in a little bit. Um, by the way, if you want to zoom up completely to it, you can hit uh, the period key on your numpad. And it will zoom right up to it. So we have our text, but um, obviously we don't want it to say text. And from the looks of it, it looks like it's actually um, it's 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 lying flat, and it's not exactly how we want it against the building. So now I'm going to show you how you can rotate an object. So it's similar to scaling. Um, you can use one of the buttons down here. You could click on the rotate button. It's this little curve and you could rotate it that way um, and by the way to undo in blender you it's it's like most um, programs you hold control and push Z um, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and undo that rotation but uh, I find an easier way to rotate is to push R on the keyboard and then choose the axis that you want to rotate around and um, so say I want to rotate around the Z axis and and just type how many degrees you want to rotate. So um, I would like to rotate this 180 degrees on, along the Z axis. So I type Z, and now I'm going to type 180, and you can see, and then push Enter, and you can see that the uh, text is rotated. And then I want to rotate this around the X axis 90 degrees. So I'm going to push R and push X, type 90. Oh, looks like. Um, I went the wrong direction, so I'm gonna backspace a couple. <clears throat> I'm gonna backspace a little bit and type 270, and then push Enter. And you can see that's exactly how I want the text on the building. So now I can move this up and put it closer to the building, and it's pretty close. But you notice that it, it doesn't have any thickness. It's a very thin looking piece of text. And before I start pulling it into the building, I want to show you how you can change the thickness of the text. And that's where we're going to go over here. And you can click on 
I'm going to have to drag the, win the side window over here a little bit out. So you want to click on the font button over here, and you want to change how much it extrudes. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just... Um, I'll, I'll just click on that and type 1. We'll see how much that gets us. So that's extruding pretty far. You can change it by clicking on these little arrows. You could even click and drag to um, get the exact extrude amount that you want. So once it's extruded, I'm going to drag this over and maybe push it in a little bit. You can see it says text on the building. Now, I don't want it to say text. Um, I would like it to say Austin. So what I'm going to do is switch the mode. So we're on object mode. I'm going to click on this little uh, menu down here and click edit mode. And now I can type. So I'm going to type. I went backspace three time, four times, and then I'm going to click. <clears throat> I went backspace. I went backspace four times, and now I'm going to type Austin. You can see it. It went off the side of the building here. I'm going to switch back to um, object mode and just just do a scale um, of of the name and maybe I'll move it a little bit and move it up top so you can see this is Austin Tower if I wanted to 3D print the object I would click export um, and I would export to an STL but first I want to select the object so I'm gonna push A on the keyboard and that will select all the objects and I wouldn't worry about these objects over here. This is a lighting position and a camera position, but those won't export with your 3D printed file. So I'm going to make sure everything's selected and click File and Export STL. All right, and then I'm going to save it wherever I want. Um, it's going to save it as Untitled, and then you can 3D print that STL file.